I get a little something, something right here called the Galatian Tactical Semi-Auto. I got myself a 177 caliber semi-automatic. I got 14 shots, I believe, in my 177. Look at those badass fiber optic sights. All right, let's see what I can do for grouping here. All right, that's seven shots, so let me go see how I did. Oh my gosh, well, I did not expect that with open sights. I got a dime-sized group with one flyer. Holy crap. So now if I could just get those sights sighted in, I think I could take these lollipops out really easily. And these two characters. How's that for some trick shooting 47 yards away? Looks like Christmas came early this year. Good old half sand hard case. This is heavy. Hold that, will ya? I'm too lazy to walk to the front of my property, so I just drove. Merry Christmas, by the way. Thanks, buddy. I'll let you shoot it later. So this right here is my brand new semi-auto tactical version of the Galatian. Super excited. I've been waiting for this gun for like a year. Ooh, it's so heavy. Bam, there it is. Looks like a, basically a giant shotgun is what it looks like. So, I'm going to do the rest of the review so you guys can see it outside in a little better lighting. Okay, right here is the Hat Sand Galatian. So, for any of you that don't know, this is a pre-charged pneumatic rifle, which means that you fill it with a scuba tank like this. You can also get a hand pump off eBay for 40 bucks. That'll fill this gun. It uses a 1 8 quick disconnect foster fitting. So here's some hardcore stats on the Hat Sand Galatian. Now the Galatian has always been Hat Sand's flagship PCP. So according to Hat Sand, the Galatian has now been made over as a semi-auto and a revamped tactical stock. Hat Sand has invested heavily over the last few years in semi-auto air tech with their efforts with the semi-auto barrage and bullmaster. So they have semi-automatic down pretty good. It comes in 177, 22 caliber, and 25 caliber. The barrel is 19.7 inches long, it's fully shrouded, and it's choked. So when it's choked, that means no slugs. You can't shoot slugs through it. It's only three on the loudness scale, so that's cool. So 177, the magazine's gonna hold 14 rounds. 22 caliber, the magazine's gonna hold 12 rounds. And 25 caliber, the magazine will hold 10 rounds. Now the overall length when the stock is closed is 38 inches. When the stock is open, it's 42. So the rear stock is fully adjustable and it has an adjustable cheek piece 
but the stock also comes completely off so you can use this like a pistol grip so that's cool it has swivel studs already installed and the front one is removable so the feet per second on the galatian the 177 caliber they're saying shoots 1020 feet per second the 22 caliber they're saying shoots 950 feet per second and the 25 caliber they're saying shoots 870 feet per second they're also saying that in any caliber you're going to get between 40 and 50 shots per fill. This gun operates at 200 bar, which is 3,000 PSI, and it has a removable 255cc cylinder. So that's cool. It has a nanometer on the front. Take a look at that in a second here. Now, one of the coolest things about the Galatian is this removable sight right here. This is fully metal and fully adjustable fiber optic. So it works in conjunction with this hooded front sight to give you a really bright three dots when you're aiming. Now Hatsan started off as a shotgun company, which is why you see a lot of shotgun DNA in this gun. The old Galatian was patterned after the Escort shotgun, but they used to make actual shotguns. The new Galatian is also sporting a black anodized aluminum alloy receiver. Yay! You see upside down right here, it's got three accessory rails. Bottom one's real handy for a bipod. Put a flashlight on the side. Okay, so this right here is where my swivel stud was getting in the way. So I just took it off. So the swivel stud is fully removable. That's one thing I like about this too. We also got a swivel stud on the rear of the butt right here too. It's like the trigger guard is polymer. Okay, now if you guys could see right there, that's called the dual combo rail. So it's a 11 millimeter dove's tail rail on top with a weaver style rail. So you can use either weaver or dove's tail rings on your hat sand glacier. That's real handy. That's something that hat sand always does on all their guns. Okay, it comes with this whole bag of stuff right here. Looks like that, that's a degasser, some O-rings, and that had the fill probe in it. It comes with three magazines, which is awesome. So I got 14 shots in each of these because it's 177 caliber. That's 43 shots. It is going to come with this fill probe right here, but you're not going to get this top part. So this top part is actually called a 1/8 BSPP foster fitting. 1/8 BSPP thread. So the pellets that I really had the most luck with were these JSB exact 10.34 grain heavies. These did really, really good. The eight grain JSB exacts also did very well, but these were really good at longer distances. Now I've ran probably three or 400 rounds through this Galatian already, and these mags have functioned flawlessly. I haven't had any issues with any jams or, or not loading or not cycling or anything at all with these magazines or this gun. So it's also great to be able to load up three magazines and shoot them all, and my point of impact doesn't change or anything. Really good. All right, to load the magazine, there's a little rubber stopper right there. So you turn it the same way as the rubber stopper is. Turn this clear cover. Right like that. And when you get to the end, you're exposing the last hole right there. Now you get yourself a pellet and you put it in skirt first. All right, now it's in there. I like to kind of hold my finger over there, shake it down a little bit. And now that pellet right there is going to hold your wheel in place. And now you're spring loaded and you can fill all these holes in with pellets. Now I was loading these magazines so fast the other day. Let me show you. There, ready to rock and roll. So I really like these magazines a lot. Now this gun has a manual safety, which means you do it right here. On your bolt side right here, it looks like when you push that in, that's safe. 
So this is how you load the magazine. This notch right here, you pull the bolt back and lock it back like that. Then on the back of the magazine, you're gonna see this little notch right here. That groove is gonna fit right over the end of the barrel that sticks out a little bit right there. So you just take the clear side facing back. You just slide this right in there like that. Now, you don't have to worry about this at all. What you do is you, you don't slam it, but you just take this gently, go like that, and it's locked in. It doesn't matter what this is doing. Now, every single time I've loaded a magazine, which has been probably 30, 40 times, it's always locked right into the first round. No matter how I put it in, I don't even worry. You just leave it loose. Lock that first round in, which it's done every single time for me, and you're ready to rock and roll. The way the gun operates is it just goes chink, 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 chink. When you pull the trigger, it cocks itself. And finally, here's that nanometer. Nice looking nanometer. Nice and clear. It's on the end, which I don't totally prefer, but that's fine. And again, you're supposed to fill this to 200 bar to the end of that green line right there. When I got my gun from Pyramid Air, it was empty. So they, they ship them empty, but you should store your PCP full. So, you know, get at least 150 pounds, if not a full 200 bar on there when you store it. Right now, I want to go over the cleaning of this bad boy. So, right off the bat, we got the front. You got your end piece right here, threaded. I guess it's got an O-ring on there, too. Yeah, so we got it threaded with an O-ring right there, all metal. And then the spring is in there. And then what's next... So, you see right here, we have some plastic baffles that are in there behind the spring. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. Okay, so if you see right here, this thing is like part way out. It slides around there, but it's not coming out the last little part here. I don't want to wreck everything up by yanking on it. So it looks like it's time to see if the shroud will come off. No, it does not appear to want to come off. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to be cleaning this hatch angulation the hard way. This is going to be fun. So the best I can do is just straighten my crown saver as much as I can. Try to... Oh, I did it. I threaded the eye of the needle. I cannot find ballastol, which is the best stuff to clean air guns with because it's okay for rubber seals. I can't find that stuff anywhere except to order it online. I'm going to have to use hops on this again, but from what I could see, there was no air gun seals where I'm working. Usually, though, you don't want to use hops number nine for air gun cleaning. Wow, look how dirty that patch was. Yikes. Second patch. Just as dirty. Yikes. The really dirty gun. Alright guys, I was able to get my hat angulation clean. That's pretty much how it went right there. Kept doing the patches until this one came out pretty clean. And then I ran it through a few of these uh, t-shirt, pieces of t-shirt through there. Finally, I got a pretty clean t-shirt out. So about 10 patches. Took a while with those baffles with the crown saver, but I got it done. So now that thing's ready to shoot. Clean as a jelly bean. Alright, we're all set. Alright guys, that's the moon right there. It's about 6.15 in the morning and I'm headed out to the shooting spot so I can uh, get a full day of shooting in. Okay, the sun's coming up at the air gun range. Looks like that's fog out there. Probably over the lake. So, I got my buddies with me. 
Chauncey's here. He's feeling a lot better. Got my little dog here. My other dog. I got my air tank all filled up here. Look at those badass fiber optic sights, fully adjustable. Up here we got a big old light gathering fiber optic sight, pretty cool. This end cap comes out really easily, so it would be easy to put an LDC on there with an adapter. This is basically a shotgun that shoots pellets. That's what it is. It weighs the same, it feels the same. This one's semi-auto, looks pretty rad. All right guys, I'm about to shoot this hat's angulation at it's probably 15 yards right here. So I want to use the open sights and see if I can hit these lollipops and what kind of group I can get. Maybe 10 yards right there, probably 10 yards. We gotta try the open sights before I put the scope on there, of course. To start us off right here, I'm using the exact Diablo 8.4 grains. So to load the clip, you take this slot right here and you have that facing forward. You just slide right in. It's going to be a little loosey-goosey, but that's fine. You just leave it like that. It'll cycle just fine. All right, that's seven shots, so let me go see how I did. Oh my gosh, well I did not expect that with open sights. I got a dime-sized group with one flyer, holy crap. So now if I could just get those sights sighted in, I think I could take these lollipops out really easily. And these two characters. Okay, I'll see how that does. So it definitely came down a little bit, that's good. I just need to come over to the right. I'm gonna keep clicking over, let's see. Boy, I don't know what it's gonna take to get my sights over that way. My groups. I have the sight adjusted all the way over to the left and I still can't get it to come right at all. So I'm going to pop these babies off and get a scope on there. Okay, I got a Hawkeye 3 to 12 power on here and I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm going to put a fresh target over here at 30 feet see what I can do.
All right, guys, that was 14 shots through a dime size with two flyers. So pretty good. 35 yards is quite a bit farther. All the way down there. Shooting from over here. Okay, not too bad, but I think we might need some uh, some different pellets, maybe some heavier ones for this range. Okay, so this is 35 yards with 10 grain JSB pellets. I was using 8 grain before, so I'm actually going to go for this top target first to see where I'm hitting, and then when I'm sufficiently set in, I'll see if I can do 14 on this bullseye right there. So after I got sighted in, I did this group right here, about a nickel. So now I'm ready for a bullseye. Not bad for 14 shots, but, you know, not my best group in the entire world, but pretty good. 14 shots. Those are the 10 grains, so definitely a little tighter, I believe, than the 8 grains. Too bad I can't get them in the bullseye. We'll see if uh, just a couple more clicks I can get in the right spot here. Then I can go to work on these guys. Now that is more like it. Did you see that? I was aiming for the bullseye and I started hitting it. So I got a little excited. Went crazy there, but good accuracy on this baby. I think it's time to take care of this uh, village of targets. See, I just shot his hat off. I would never shoot my friend. I shot his hat off like I do all the time. Another hat for my buddy there. That's a real hat. Real Barbie hat.
see if I can take out this whole bunch with one clip. Although I didn't count my targets, but he doesn't count. I just have to shoot his hat off. Alright, that was pretty cool. I want to try that one more time though with my bipod so I can swing and get these targets really, really fast. See how fast I can do all those guys. Now that was definitely a lot of fun, okay? That hat sand tactical Galatian semi-auto does not miss, so I just did that in less than one clip without missing. It's pretty cool. Even this guy over here, the tripod was in the way, and all I could see with this little butt right here, I could see about that much, and then the tripod was in the way, and so I aimed for his butt, and look where I hit. Freaking nailed him right where I was aiming. You can see the, the carnage back there. Well, you guys, so at the end, I just started shooting these lollipop sticks in half from 35 yards away. I did five in a row right there. So, super tack driver at 35 yards, that semi-auto Galatian. And the magazines are loading really well. I've never had a jam so far or any misfeeds, so this thing's looking really, really awesome gun. Really loving it. All right, now let's see if we can do that same thing at 50 yards. I'm gonna fire at this little target right here. See where I hit at 50 yards. I'm sighted in for 35. Wow, pretty amazing. So uh, at 50 yards, it's only hitting about maybe a half inch low from where 35 yards is. So I'm going to go ahead and go for this other bullseye right here, see what we can do at 50. This right here, I am going for group. See if I can get a 14 shot group, how tight I can get it.
Not bad. I could have done better. That was shooting as fast as I could. I'm getting really uh, hungry and tired, so I'm actually going to have to wrap this up. But I am going to do a 50-yard lollipop challenge real fast. And then we'll do some 50-yard accuracy shooting on another day when I'm not so tired. All right, guys. This is 50 yards away. Let's see if I can hit these all. So this concludes my hats angulation semi-auto review. I might come back and do a little bit of accuracy testing at 50 yards, but as we saw, uh, I was putting them in a nickel size group at 50 yards, no problem, without even really trying. So this is definitely a tack driver in 177 at least that I tested right here. Having 14 shots is awesome. It's great that it comes with three magazines. I love the fact that you can take this stock off and have a pistol grip pellet gun. I mean, that's pretty rare right there. So I can't wait to put a laser on this thing. So what can I say? I love the gun. I'm not going to bore you with all the stuff I love about it. But it's a great buy. It costs $749. Uh, you can get them at Pyramid Air, Air Gun Depot, and all kinds of places. So definitely it's a solid gun. It's accurate. It's semi-automatic. So I'd say if you're in the market for this kind of thing, go for it. It's a well-made gun, and it's a good gun. So anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Check this out. Whoa, that's regular slow motion speed, so I can slow it down even more than that. So that came out good. Totally worth five bucks or whatever I spent on that stuff. Plus I can use it again.